we'll all look back to someday. We're to be soul winners. We're in a war. I, I'll tell you something that helps some of you to begin to understand the church here. Some of you can't understand me for nothing. You can't understand me why all these issues are big issues. Let me tell you why. You're not interested in the souls of men. You're not trying to keep people out of hell. You're not telling others about Christ. I'll tell you what would break a revival loose in some of your lives. If you would decide that you'll become a soul winner and you begin to see the necessity and the urgency, then you'll begin to see why Brother Owens protects the purity of the church because the Holy Spirit of God will come in mighty power when a church is pure. When they uplift that book and they don't apologize for that book, more power for keeping people out of hell. If you really love God, you'd tell people about Him. And I don't just mean you say, uh, 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 my country, tis of thee. I'm talking about you talk. You tell people about Jesus Christ. You warn them about heaven. You warn them about hell. You would understand me better if you really cared about what God cared about. And the war is not between me and you, sir. The war is not between me and you, ma'am. The real war is between Satan and God. And the real war is about heaven and hell. And I have been enlisted as a warrior in the army of God. And I'm trying to recruit everybody. I'm trying to get everybody that's in boot camp fired up, charged up, and courageous enough. I've been trying to teach you how to use the weapon. I've been trying to teach you how to camouflage yourself so you can influence people for Christ. That's why he left you here. He did not leave you here to get you a big house. He did not leave you here to get a big car. He did not leave you here to get your retirement program. He did not leave you here to sit on the couch and eat potato chips all day long and watch Hollywood. He left you here so you could use the Holy Spirit that's within you to fight the war for the souls of men. That's why we're here. Some of us need to praise God. For the Holy Spirit of God. By faith, praise Him for what He's going to do in your life. Praise the Holy Spirit of God. I tell you, after people get saved, you ought to praise the Holy Spirit. Say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You got another one. Testify about your soul winning experiences. Give Him credit. Don't take it for yourself. Praise God for the souls that were saved this week. Maybe if some of you would praise Him for the last one, you'd get another one. I'm finished, but listen, let me make one final application. In the early days of civilization, when the battle shield was invented, it was made of wood, had a wood frame around the outside edge. Then they would take a dried animal skin and stretch it over that frame, a wooden frame. Much like, uh, let's see... Uh, Ms. Weibel, is it, is it needlepoint that has the ring? Is that what it is? Okay, you know, if you, if you do needlepoint, you got that, that wooden ring. The way they build a shield is they would take a big wooden ring, and then they would stretch a dried animal skin over that wooden frame. Then they'd grab a hold of it, and they would use that in the primitive days as a shield. Well, the enemy figured out exactly how to penetrate that skin. You see, when that shield came out, they thought, well, what are we going to do? We can't shoot at our target well. And so the enemy began to put fire to their arrows. They began to put fire to their darts. So they would, they would light a dart on fire or light the arrow on fire, and then when they would shoot at that shield, the dart that was on fire would stick in the shield, and then the dried skin and the wooden frame would go up in smoke. It would catch a blaze. Then we would throw the shield down, and the enemy would shoot us with the arrow. And many a good soldier had met his maker on the battlefield because the shield was not adequate. And so, the shield-carrying army said, we've got to come up with a way to keep this from happening. And they figured out how to do it. They began taking their shield and soaking that shield in a non-flammable oil. They would soak that shield in this non-flammable oil. And when the fiery darts of the enemy would hit that shield soaked in oil, that oil would actually quench the fiery dart of the evil. 
That is exactly the illustration that is being given here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 8, 9, all the way up to verse uh, number 18. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hey, you pick up that shield of faith. It is drenched in the oil of the Holy Spirit of God. And when Satan shoots at you, you block it with the shield of faith. And, faith. and when the fiery dart hits that shield, it will quench the fire of the devil. But some of you, you're not allowing the Holy Spirit of God to protect you. You've not dipped your shield of faith into the Holy Spirit of God. You're not going to battle. You're not out trying to keep people out of hell. That's why you keep getting poked. That's why you keep getting stabbed. That's why some of you are bleeding like you're bleeding and hurting like you're hurting. You're not using the weapons of warfare. You're in the battle. You're in the battle. You have no choice. You're born again, and you're one of his targets. Pick up the shield of faith. Dip it in the Holy Spirit of God. Let's go charge hell, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. we got to keep people out of hell. There's no armor for your back, and that's why some of you feel like you're getting stabbed in the back. You even blame God. You say, God, why do these things keep happening to me? You're walking the wrong way, babe. You're to charge hell and keep people out of hell. Don't run from soul winning. You, you uncover your back, and there's no armor for your back. There is armor for the front. Now, like a mighty army, mount up on your horses. Let's go get some people saved. But wait, that's not all. That's not all. When a soldier would die on the battlefield, they would have to gather the bodies to bring them home. A soldier's body would be placed on his shield, and then they would drag him home with him curled up in that shield. And one of these days, all the saved soldiers of Jesus Christ, we either go up in the rapture or we'll die. But let me tell you something. If it is, we must face death. God's going to take our bodies. going to place it on that shield of faith that's been soaked in the Holy Spirit of God. And that's how we're going to be transported back to heaven. Because it is your faith that saved you. It is the Holy Spirit that will take you to heaven someday. That same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will help you to raise others who need a resurrection from being lost and on their way to hell to becoming saved and on their way to heaven. If you're not saved here today, you've got to get born again. God wants you saved. That's why he brought you here today. There's no mistaking it. If you're saved, it's time for you to stop making excuses. I can't do it. Yep, you're right. You can't. He can. He's equipped you with everything you need. Face it. Ask for it. Claim it. Use it. And praise God for it. And he said... But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you. Let's realize what the real battle is. It's a war for the souls of mankind. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes every head.